Good morning. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Praise the Lord. The Lord has blessed us with a nice, cool morning. Um, if you do not have uh, any papers for the songs, then please um, uh, look around and, and maybe you can share with someone, a neighbor. I copied off 60 and looks like we're, we, we got, I think we're getting close to 60 some people here. This is a praise of God. A lot of people are uh, coming out here into the cold weather. So thank you. And I'm sure you guys have your long johns on, car hearts and sock hats. So that, that's good. And uh, we won't. Uh, someone had already mentioned since a Baptist preacher's here, uh, we're going to be here for four hours. That's not true. Uh, <laughs> so you know that. So um, the, the band would probably kill me back here, or our worship team, um, because their fingers and, and toes are getting cold. But will you join me in a, in a word of prayer, please? <laughs> Father God, we come before to thank you, Lord. This is such an amazing day, Lord. Here in this cemetery, Lord, we are acknowledging, Lord, we are acknowledging your son Christ. <laughs> That the grave could not keep him, Lord. That he rose from the dead. And, Lord, he's at the right-hand side of our Father in heaven. And, Lord, that he had victory over death. He had victory over the grave. Victory over our enemy, Lord. And, and Lord, we thank you. We just want to come here this morning to exalt and to lift up the name of Jesus. Because Christ is worthy. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for this opportunity to come together in this great country that we live in. That we can come as... Multiple congregations are here from different churches that we serve the same Jesus. We acknowledge the life of Christ. So we worship you here today. We praise you. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do things just a little bit different. When I was asked to do this particular service, I would like to reflect upon this, the life of Christ. If we go back even to December 25th and just look at Christmas Day, that we acknowledge the Christ child, the long-awaited Messiah that was communicated throughout the Old Testament, that there'd be one who would come, who would take away the sins of the world, that he'd be born of a virgin, born in the town of Bethlehem, that he was fully God and fully man. And Brother John says that the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us. That he lived a perfect life, no sin. When John the Baptist saw Jesus walking towards him, he said, Behold, here comes the Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. How amazing. That Jesus would be willing to go to the cross, to the cross on Calvary, to forgive us of our sins. In Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So Jesus went and spent his blood for you and for me because he loved us that much. At this time, we're going to sing the song, The Old Rugged Cross. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, I see you all spread out a little bit. We don't have any microphones or any speakers. It's a little chilly. If y'all warm, if y'all move on in a little bit, it might warm us up a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, man. Your voice is like the guitar string on a cold morning. It shrivels up a little. <laughs> I love you. 
Christ died for our sins. He was an atoning sacrifice for everyone who calls upon his name. He was buried, and on the third day he rose from the grave. And it's this story, the life of Christ, it's just not to focus on his birth, his life, the cross, or the resurrection. It's everything. We need to take a step back and understand that when we look at his death and we look here today at his resurrection, in Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives through me. It's through this that we stop and we understand that our God that we serve is not dead, but he is alive. And he lives here today. In the book of Acts, I was reading with Peter when he went to Pentecost and he was sharing the story and he shared really this here and he's referring to King David, how he uh, it foreshadowed uh, what was going to take place with Christ and his resurrection in Acts 2. And he goes on and he talks about how when Christ left and ascended to the right hand side of God, that he sent his Holy Spirit to us. So Christ lives in us. And we can understand that he lives because of the Spirit of God that dwells inside of every believer who calls upon the name of Jesus Christ. Will you please sing with me, He Lives. Because He lives I can face
Matthew 26, we catch Jesus in the garden and he's praying. And this is before he's going to the cross and realizing that he's going to carry the sins of mankind upon his shoulders. Scripture even says that as he was talking to us, Abba Father says, My soul is overwhelmed. And he asked if this cup could be removed from him. And he kept looking to his disciples, and they, they were falling asleep on him, and they weren't really following through real well, covering his back by praying for him, right? And I don't know about you, I get thinking about Scripture maybe a little too much, and I meditate on things, and I ponder things, and I thought, you know, what if Jesus at that moment of time, realizing that the burden was so heavy upon him, and he said, I'm not going to do this. This is too tough. I don't want to take the sins of mankind on my shoulders and go die on a cross and be beaten, spit on. I got better things I can be doing. I don't really want to commit to something like that. But we know that that's not the case when we look at God's word and we read that he understood it. It wasn't his will, but it is his father's will. And what he means by that is he realized that the Lord had plans for his life and he wanted him to faithfully live those things on out. So therefore, Christ said yes to his Abba Father. That he was willing to go and suffer for his namesake and, and take on mankind's sin and, and have victory over sin and over the grave. And we can say praise God for that. Like I said, it wouldn't make sense whatsoever if Christ would not have followed through. And it doesn't make sense either for you and I because we come here to this, this morning here and I'm sure that when you looked at the thermostat and said 30 some degrees, you may have thought maybe a couple times, do I really want to come out here? And I'm happy that you did. Praise God for your commitment and for your dedication. So obviously there's something inside of you that's stirring and saying, you know what? I have a relationship with Christ. I want to celebrate this occasion here today knowing that my Jesus is alive today. That I have victory over sin over the grave and I can have eternal life through him and him alone and it would make no sense for us to not share that message would it? we could come here and we can worship and I tell you what the Lord loves our worship and the Lord took me to the first Samuel where, um, where Samuel and the Lord were talking about his offering he said now, I, I appreciate your worship but I want obedience and we look at God's word it says if you love me you will obey my what my commandments. He's given us a commandment in Matthew 28. It says, therefore, go and make disciples to the other ends of the earth and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have a message that will change lives. And I want to challenge you not to hold that in and say no to that. We have victory in life whenever we acknowledge Christ as our Lord and Savior. Romans 10, 13 says, it says anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not my words, those are God's words. And whenever we acknowledge Christ as our Lord, I hope that there's a light that shines so bright in us that we want to share this message of Jesus. Paul talks about this message, and I'm going to share it. It's the gospel. This is what we've been talking about. This is why you and I are here today. He said, now brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and which you have taken your stand. By the gospel, you are saved. 
if you hold firmly to the words I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. What I pass on, excuse me, what I receive, I pass on to you as the first importance. Paul saying, man, this, this is it. This is so important. Please listen on up. That Christ died for our sins according to Scripture and that he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to Scripture. And it talks about all the people who saw Jesus in the flesh. Saw him personally. All the witness in that accounts there proving that our God did not die and stay in the grave, that he is alive here today. I want you and I to walk away from this living a victorious life, reflecting and sharing the message of Jesus. Like I said, it wouldn't make sense if Jesus kept everything to himself and said, no, I, I'm not going to follow through. I realize there's a price when it comes to sharing Christ. There's going to be some people that look at you and say, what are you trying to do? You know what? I'm trying to share the good news with you. I want you to have victory in life. That you don't have to live life being conquered by sin. I want you to live a victorious life knowing that whenever you die someday, that you will know that you will see our Jesus when you walk into heaven. So at this time, let us sing victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story about a Savior named from glory. How he is like
Pastor Reed Hopkins to close us in prayer. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> First, I got an announcement from the Ruritans. They have graciously brought donuts. They said, unfortunately, some glitch went wrong with the coffee, so there won't be coffee. But there are donuts, so go to that truck right over there after the service is over. I'm going to close in prayer, but then don't leave yet because there's a benediction afterward and you're going to help me with it. So let us pray. Gracious Lord, you are our victory. And we ask you to help us go through this day in the spirit of of Mary Magdalene and the other women who were the first people ever to see the risen Christ and carry the great news of the gospel that Christ had been raised from the dead. And for Peter and John and all the other disciples. And also even Thomas, who had to have proof that when he saw, he believed and said, my Lord and my God. Help us to go forth not only today, but to live as Easter people through our lives ahead because you live we live help us to live fully not only to exist but to live in you and for you in the name of our risen lord jesus christ we pray and all of god's people say amen, amen. now at the end of the benediction i'm going to do a little thing that i like to do on easter morning i'm going to say christ is risen and your reply some of you know it christ is risen indeed christ is risen indeed and we're going to make these mountains echo around us. So I'm sure the first time you're going to say it half dead, but we're going to build up till we finally make these mountains ring. Go forth now in the new life brought to you and bought for you by Jesus our Lord. In all that you say and all that you do, proclaim to those you meet the wonderful news, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say.
He became sin who knew no sin that we might become His righteousness. He humbled Himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Jesus Messiah. Name above all names. Name above all names. Blessed Redeemer. Blessed Redeemer. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. The rescue for sinners. The rescue for sinners. The ransom from hell. Jesus Messiah, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, His body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing. Messiah, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, name above all names. Blessed, Redeemer. blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, all our hope is in you, all our hope is in you, all the glory to you. Messiah, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, name above all names. Blessed Redeemer, Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven. The Jesus Messiah, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, Jesus Messiah.